Wukong Prime. So someone actually asked me to do a Wukong build for the Steel Path. I've decided to actually co-op that into an overview video. So let's get into it. Here we are in the simulacrum with Wukong and Basically, Wukong is the monkey god prime named after, of course, Sun Wukong, or as we call him in Cantonese, Shi Hung. He is, of course, a Chinese mythological character. And frankly, I think he's done a really, really good job of actually reflecting his skill set in the form of Wukong. So his abilities are as follows. If you use his first ability, it is a celestial twin. The idea is that he pulls a hair out and it becomes a fighting clone of himself. His second ability is Cloud Walker, which allows him to basically fly around in a cloud, as well as healing, which we'll talk about a little bit later on. His third ability is Court Defy, where he basically becomes invulnerable for a moment of time before doing a bunch of damage as well as getting a bunch of armor. His fourth ability is going to be his Iron Staff. It is called Primal Fury and basically this is a Staff Exalted Weapon with its own good old fashioned uh, moveset. So that's going to be really, really good. Now, Wukong's passive is actually kind of strange in the sense that he has five potential buffs that he could activate at random if he actually dies, quote unquote. So basically in every mission you will have three available and it could be randomly aiding of them. So if you exhort all of them, then Wukong starts dying as per usual. But the buffs are basically some extra elemental damage, it's actually a lot of elemental damage, some invisibility for about half a minute, some invulnerability for about half a minute, some extra loot dropping for about a minute, or some extra orb effectiveness, i.e. energy and health orbs for about a minute. So that's going to be really, really good. Now, as per usual, when it comes to a video like this, we're going to be first dealing with the damage output, followed by the survivability, followed by the crowd control, and then the support capabilities. And of course, finally, the kit usability in order to give him a score on each of these criteria, which will then come together to culminate into a final score. So let's get into it. The first thing, of course, is going to be his damage output. And basically, Wukong has a lot of options when it comes to his damage output. The main one, of course, after we coat these enemies, is going to be his Iron Staff which is using a condition overload build, so I'll have a look at that build in a second. But as you can see here, we're able to do a lot of damage to these Club Heavy Gunners. Oh, there we go. Who's left? Eh, voila. So, let's have a look at the build that we're using with the Iron Staff. And like all Exalted Weapons, this is also going to be affected by the Wukong build itself. So, here is the Iron Staff build that I'm using. It says two former build, mainly one Umbral former for Sacrificial Steel and then another former for Prime Fury so I can fit them all in. Otherwise, the rest of this build should be pretty straightforward. We're going for Toxin damage in order to deal with enemies that have a lot of shields. We're going for Carnage Mandible mainly to get some extra status chance and also to actually, you know, give it potentially more slash procs if possible. Otherwise, Shattering Impact is going to be the main crux when it comes to dealing with armor because Wukong doesn't really have any other way of handling armor at the present moment so this is basically going to be all we can rely on in terms of stripping armor especially against high level enemies otherwise the rest of this build should be really, really straightforward and like i said condition overload is going to be also a main driving force especially if you're using a weapon like the staff of armadillo in order to supercharge its damage the thing about the Wukong build that will supercharge the power of the Iron Staff is not just the power strength, but also an augment. So here is the build that I'm using with Wukong. It's a zero form of build, and yet this does seemingly really, really well, especially in high level missions. What we're looking at is basically a rage tank build. So Hunter Adrenaline, Vitality, these are pretty straightforward. Otherwise, we've got some extra range, some extra duration, some extra strength, as well as some extra efficiency, mainly to counteract the efficiency drain coming from blind rage as well as power drift is also going to give us a bit of extra efficiency as well that's going to be really, really useful of course the augment that i was referring to previously is going to be primal rage primal rage is a primal fury augment where killing an enemy increases the crit chance of the primal fury staff by 15 percent this is of course going to massively increase and massively drive up the damage of the pogo stick to the point where it actually does an additional 62 and a half i believe percent extra crit chance because unfortunately the bonus is not a flat bonus it is going to be affected by the base stats of the iron staff itself and we also have celestial stomp which i'm going to talk about later on but it is in fact a really really useful augment so 
that's pretty much it when it comes to this build because this guy is a tank we're going to be using arcane grace and arcane energize so the fun thing about wukong is that his celestial twin also gets access to the iron staff as well if we were to for example summon our celestial twin and then bring out our iron staff as you can see here even the celestial twin is going to very quickly brutalize these butchers in a really really quick manner so celestial Twin acts basically like a good old fashioned Spectre, except this time he actually does double damage, so that's really, really good. Celestial Twin, of course, has access to any weapon, so it doesn't really matter what you're using if you decide to actually summon the same witches all over again. You could potentially use, say, the Showstopper, or actually the Scourge of Armadillo and do double damage, it's entirely up to you. But basically, as soon as you swap weapons, he will also swap weapons to whichever weapon you are basically not using. So that's really, really good. So just like how the Celestial Twin is capable of using the Iron Staff at the same time, they can also use another ability called Defy when you're using it as well. So Defy is a very straightforward ability. The idea is you become invulnerable for a brief moment. You build up on a bunch of damage and then you kill everyone nearby with that damage. So that is really, really straightforward. And obviously, like I said, the Celestial Twin can do the exact same thing. So, if we were to summon our Celestial Twin and tell him to go ham. Et voila. It's the exact same deal. So, the fire basically absorbs a bunch of damage during its duration and then unleashes an AoE on that damage. That damage actually goes through a damage multiplier and that will then determine how much damage is actually outputted by Defy during that spin. On my build, we're looking at around about 12.68 times multiply, so that's absolutely massive. That's why we can do so much extra damage, despite the fact that we're actually absorbing enemy damage. You can't actually shoot your own Defy and supercharge it like that, unfortunately, so you're going to have to just rely on the 12.6 times multiplier in order to actually do even more. This damage appears to be affected by armor though, so keep in mind if you go up against safe rubber heavy gunners, you're going to probably find a bit of a hard time when it comes to using the final to try and wipe out a bunch of enemies. But because that damage is absorbed damage, i.e. absorbing from enemy fire, it does effectively scale infinitely, so that is of course really, really good. Also keep in mind when it comes to Wukong's damage during the first three times that Wukong quote unquote dies, he has a chance to activate a particular passive that could further increase his elemental damage. I of course am referring to the passive that allows you to do 300% elemental damage, so that can be really, really strong. Keep in mind you have a 1 in 5 chance of which you have 3 chances to actually take it as well, so if it doesn't activate then bad luck, but once it activates the first time, it's all over for that mission. So. Not only does Wukong have access to some heavy sustained damage in the form of his Iron Staff Exalted Weapon, he also has access to really high heavy burst damage in the form of his Defy, especially in really high level missions. You can easily and essentially double that damage with both yourself and the Celestial Twin, and then of course that might actually be a triple damage effectively because of the fact that Wukong's Celestial Twin can actually do double damage, at least with the weapons, but I'm not entirely sure if that's the case when it comes to Defy. I'm sure someone in the comments can correct me if I am wrong. Basically, we have a lot of damage in there, and if you use something like Shattering Impact, you do have some way of stripping armor. So, all together, I think we're going to have to give Wukong's damage score a 10 out of 10. Okay, the next thing we're going to look at is Wukong's survivability. So right out of the gate, he has higher than average stats for pretty much all three main things, which is of course higher than average health, higher shield, and higher armor than the average Warframe. So that's really, really good. Now, Wukong has two main ways of staying alive, a third way that acts as a backup, and a fourth way that's kind of out of the way, but we'll have a look at it anyway. So the first way we're going to look at is Cloud Walker. So we're going to take a bunch of damage. Probably more damage to my health, come on. And then we're going to hit two. And while I'm invulnerable, as long as I move around, I heal. But if I stay still as Wukong, 
you'll find that I don't heal. So you gotta keep moving around, and in doing so, you are going to heal up quite a lot. So that is, of course, really, really good. Like so. So, how does this work? It's really, really straightforward. It is a heal based on distance traveled. So as long as I keep traveling, I will keep healing based on the amount of distance that I have traveled. On my build, we're looking at around about 1.6% of Wukong's health per meter traveled. So that is why I'm just able to heal really, really easily. And that's also why Wukong actually is potentially one of the strongest rage tanks in the game because of how quickly you can actually heal him because of the percentage health. Obviously, that means you could potentially do an Umbral build with Wukong and that could be really, really strong as well. And keep in mind as well that Cloud Walker also cleanses any status procs. So if you happen to get hit by something like a Toxin proc or a Slash proc, you can actually just get rid of that by jumping into your cloud as well. Now, Wukong has a second way of staying alive in the form of Defy. So if we once again summon these level 100 copy heavy gunners like so, what we're going to do now is, as we're taking damage, as we're taking damage, as we're taking damage, uh-oh, I need to panic. I'm going to press 3. Now, in doing so, I'm actually going to become invulnerable for a brief moment, and then afterwards, I will radiate that damage like I said in the DPS section of this video but at the same time if you look at the bottom right hand corner of the screen there is now an armor cow so that is of course really really good so if I actually just heal myself with Cloud Walker for a brief moment you'll now notice that I'm taking significantly less damage to these corrupted heavy gunners so that is of course really really good having that extra armor is going to make him even more powerful than ever before and this is really important when you're going up against really high level enemies because generally speaking, they're going to do a lot of damage, so you kind of want to rely on that armor in order to be able to then just move around and freely just do things without actually dying, so that's really, really good. Now, the amount of damage that is actually absorbed by Defy for the purposes of armor generation, that also goes through a multiplier as well. In my build, we're looking at a 2.5 multiplier, so that's really, really strong. The bonus armor does cap, however, at 1500, which means in particularly high levels, i.e. Steel Path, you're going to very quickly reach that cap, no problem. So don't really worry about the cap too much, but if you're going up against low-level enemies, then you may want to think about that cap, but even then, you probably don't need to worry about that cap because they're low-level enemies. That's literally how that works. Keep in mind as well that just as the Celestial Twin can do the damage portion of the Good Old Fashioned Defy ability, you can also do the same when it comes to the armor generation part and the vulnerability as well. So as you can see there, there's my Celestial Twin using Defy, well, I should say that I'm using Defy. And of course, the amount of damage that it accumulates will also contribute to the amount of armor that it produces, so that's basically how that works. Now, the backup way that I mentioned is basically through the power of Wukong's passive. So like I mentioned, when Wukong actually hits a bleed out stage, he actually doesn't die. So it's kind of like how Nidus works, if you get enough stacks. As you can see here, we have now activated one of the immortal techniques. In this case, we've now activated the second one, and then eventually we're going to die again. And now we've activated the third one. So in this case, we get three random immortal techniques, three random buffs. One of them was triple elemental damage, and then another one was invisibility, and there was a third one in there somewhere, which was the first one, but I don't remember what it is. But as you just saw right there, once you actually run out of immortal techniques, then you suddenly can't actually use them anymore, and therefore you will actually die properly. So that's something that you want to keep an eye on. In terms of the actual states that you could potentially get, one of them is also very useful for survivability purposes in the form of the invisibility one that we just got. But then don't forget there's also an invulnerability one as well for 30 seconds, which can be really, really strong as well, because obviously if you can't protect a lot of enemy fire and you actually died, then perhaps having a 30 second invulnerability phrase, that can be very, very strong for various reasons. So I definitely recommend checking out all of those invulnerability buffs because you could get something that's really, really useful. And then finally, we're going to have a look at the out-of-way sort of method of staying alive as Wukong. And this is really something that I do a lot with a Duality Spectre with Equinox. So, what we're going to do is we're going to summon these guys again. And what we're going to do is we're going to use our Celestial Twin. But basically, we're going to use the Celestial Twin as a way of taunting our Corrupted Heavy Gunners. So, while they are attacking the Celestial Twin, they're not attacking me. That's pretty much it. And the way we achieve this is by putting Guardian Derision on something like the Showstopper. So as you can see there, once my Celestial Twin dies, they all start to attack me, so that's going to be really, really problematic. But while they're attacking me, if I then drop my Celestial Twin out, 
they start to attack him because of the power of Guardian Derision. That's basically how that is. It is a really, really powerful thought, so I definitely recommend that if you really want something like this. But generally speaking, because of the other two ways, you don't really need to worry about something like that. Ultimately, the backup passive and the out of the way method are really just there if you really need it. I wouldn't really rely on it too much. It's just something that you can do if you so desire. But generally speaking, keeping an eye on your health and using tactically the power of the Cloud Walker and Defy is already a really powerful combo that will basically give Wukong an easy survivability score of 10 out of 10. Alright, let's have a look at Wukong's crowd control. So Wukong has two forms of crowd control in the form of a radial hard stun and a radial knockdown. The radial hard stun is actually a reference to something called Celestial Stomp, which is an augment for Celestial Twin. If I hold one, the twin will then do that. I hold one, the twin will do that. And what that results in is a gigantic stun that kind of looks similar to a Rhino Stomp. So that is, of course, really, really strong. If you do it again, one more time, like so, and suddenly everyone is hit with essentially a Rhino Stomp. Now the Radial Knockdown is actually in reference to Defy, so Defy happens like so, and then when it gets hit by everyone, well it actually just then knocks everyone down. It's a pretty straightforward knockdown. So that's basically it. Because Celestial Stomp is a Radial Hard Stun, that alone would have netted a 9 out of 10 crowd control score for Wukong, but because the fire also brings along a radio knockdown, we're just going to have to give him a very easy 10 out of 10. Still working. Continue to defend. Let's have a look at Wukong's support capabilities and unfortunately this is where Wukong really struggles because he only has one sort of maybe kind of support ability if you can even really count it as a support ability in the form of enveloping cloud which is actually an augment for his second ability so when you're in your cloud walker if you have an ally that enters that cloud walker range you will notice that they will actually become invisible so let's find Thierry Arda Oh, Thierry Arda is now invulnerable and that is basically how that works. It also works on your Celestial Twin as well, if for whatever reason you feel like making the Celestial Twin invulnerable. So get into that range and there we go, the Celestial Twin is now invulnerable and that is the same with any ally that you have on your team. Ironically enough, the duration of this invisibility is actually even longer than Loki's invisibility. So I suppose there's that, but that's pretty much it. He can't heal anyone, he can't provide shields to anyone, he can't provide armor to anyone outside of, of course, the Celestial Twin, which doesn't really count. And at the present moment, that's basically what it is. So because of that, we can only go off his augment. And although his augment is useful, I'm going to have to only give him a support score of 2 out of 10. Let's have a look at his kit usability. So all of Wukong's abilities are super duper useful. So they all get a two out of two. Very, very straightforward. Now the big thing for me is probably gonna have to be his passive. I feel like his passive is not useful in the sense of you don't really find yourself using it unless you've fallen asleep for a microsecond. So because he is able to have so much survivability in the form of his really, really fast healing, 
as well as a lot of armor through the power of Defy, as well as various invulnerability stages through the power of both Cloud Walker and Defy. Kinda don't really find yourself using the passive all that much. That being said, if you do actually find yourself using the passive, well, the passive is actually very, very good. So I feel like I'm just going to have to give his passive a score of 1 out of 2. It's not that it's bad, it's just that because Wukong is essentially like a super duper tanky Warframe anyway, it, that kind of makes it really inconducive to the use of his passive. But all of that together will bring his kit usability score to 9 out of 10. So with a damage score of 10 out of 10, a survivability score of 10 out of 10, a support score of 2 out of 10, a craft control score of 10 out of 10, and a kit usability score of 9 out of 10, that brings Wukong's total score to 8.2 out of 10. That's right, Wukong is an 8 out of 10 Warframe, which does make him seem painfully average, but that's only because of his support score dragging him down. Again, without any way of healing or providing shields or armor or anything like that, he's not going to be able to do anything at all in that regard. But if you take out the support score for a second and you only think of him as a Warframe that you want to use in solo runs, he is potentially one of the strongest Warframes out there in the game because he is just capable of doing everything. Pretty much. Except supporting his allies. Pretty much. So that's pretty much it. Let me know what you think about all this in the comments below. Do you agree or disagree with any of the scores that I have given for Wukong? Let me know in the comments. Otherwise, hope you guys enjoyed this. If you liked this video, hit that like button, subscribe for more Warframe content. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching.